That's it so far. The next news is the nine o'clock news, but from Anna Ford and from me, good evening. Brian Keenan was a hostage for four and a half years, chained in tiny cells with John McCarthy. They came through it together. Their courage and humor was greater than the brutality and the beatings. Now Brian Keenan tells the real story of the hostages' survival on BBC Breakfast News tomorrow morning. Good evening. There have been some tremendous thunderstorms in southern France today. A typical example at Montélimar, gusts of over 70 miles an hour, and rain 50 millimetres in six hours is conservative. Many places have had a lot more than that, and you can understand why. If you look at the satellite picture, the darker the tops, usually the, the heavier the rain. And these thunderstorms have been around all day, not moving very far. And in the same frontal system, it's been lying across the British Isles for a couple of days as well. If we zoom in on the British Isles, you can see, in fact, there's quite a demarcation zone. It's been some quite summery weather for Western Scotland and most of Ireland during today, whereas a th thicker cloud further east has concealed a fair amount of rain. The radars picked it up quite nicely, mostly in the form of showers, and the lighter tops are in fact heavier showers. Some pretty heavy ones been around in Devon and Dovid and just developing here in the East Midlands. Now they're likely to be heavy enough in the next few hours for me to warn you of some very heavy rain in East Midlands and Lincolnshire. In fact, local flooding and very nasty on the roads, a lot of mist and fog mixed in with a lot of spray and probably not confined to the East Midlands and Lincolnshire either. I wouldn't be surprised to find heavier bursts further south in central southern England and anywhere up through East Anglia as well. So generally a wet night for this part of the country, a lot of mist and fog. It will be clearer for most of Scotland overnight, most of Ireland, and uh, gradually in towards parts of the western part of Wales and possibly England as well. And that's where the temperatures will be lowest, low enough in fact, a touch of ground frost up in Scotland. And when you eventually go to bed further south and east, it's going to be quite a muggy night, maybe only 14 in East Anglia. Now, tomorrow it's going to be a very, very slow clearance of this rather grey and wet weather from the eastern part of the country. And as that drifts away to allow the brighter strip through the middle with some sunshine, so already you can see more rain heading for the west country, Northern Ireland and Scotland later on in the day. So it's going to start off quite grey, quite wet with the residual overnight rain. It might be brighter in southwest England and western Wales, and almost certainly in western Scotland. And as that brightness gradually pushes in, so rain then will return to western Scotland and parts of Northern Ireland. Temperatures generally a little bit down in many places on today. The warmest probably in the southeast of England, 17, maybe 18, if we're lucky enough to see the sun later on in the day. Now that's Wednesday's pressure chart. Perth is a little better, but look at that low pressure coming in. The police knew immediately that something terrible had happened. Ron? And the case turned quickly into a murder inquiry. Ron? Amid intense confusion, a crime watch appeal was made. Ron? Yielding a crucial clue in an intriguing investigation. Are you absolutely sure that you've told us everything? Yeah. No, definitely not. Don't know. No comment. So you've come out with a total pack of lies? Not a total pack. No comment. Who actually killed Mr. Harris? No comment. That's Crime Watch File, Thursday at 9.30 on BBC One. If your addiction is the telly, you can pitch your wits against two teams with Noel Edmonds posing the questions in half an hour, here on BBC One. Good evening, the headlines from Newsroom South East. Thousands of jobs in the balance tonight at British Aerospace. Three-day week continues as Ford extends short-time working. And Gaza makes his comeback playing against his old side. More than 2,500 jobs tonight hang in the balance as British Aerospace decides whether to close its aircraft factory at Hatfield. The future of the Hertfordshire plant will be announced tomorrow when the company releases details of a major shake-up of its passenger aircraft operation. British Aerospace has already laid off thousands of workers in the southeast as the industry contracts. Our business correspondent Marie Kinsey reports. By this time tomorrow, these people arriving for work.